All right. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Adrián. I'm from Guatemala. Currently, I'm a GDE for Android, Firebase, and IoT. And uh, we're going to spend the next uh, 30, 40 minutes uh, sharing about uh, machine learning, MLKit, and Flutter. Our uh, agenda for, the, for that time, it's a little bit of um, theory on machine learning, mostly because I like for everyone to leave this talk with a, a clear idea that machine learning is not magic. It's uh, some kind of a tool. So we're going to discuss the basics of machine learning, a bit on MLKit as well. And we're going to do a simple app to use MLKit using Flutter. And afterward, we're going to discuss a couple of uh, conclusions about this. Basically, I'm here to tell you a story, a tale about a bear. I love hiking, so every time that I get the chance to be near of a mountain, I try to hike as many trails that I'm able to. Uh, the other day I was in Colorado. This is uh, Royal Arch. It's a nice, beautiful hike. You can do it in a couple of hours. I actually ended up doing it uh, kind of uh, impromptu, mostly because uh, it's in a park that's near, near a city. So uh, basically, you can drive there and uh, spend some hours hiking after um, any work day. So I was there, uh, as I mentioned, kind of impromptu doing this hike. And mostly because I was doing it wearing uh, not the right gear, let's say. I was wearing running shoes, uh, sneakers or tennis or whatever you call those shoes, not hiking shoes. Uh, I was wondering, would it make a difference to do this hike again wearing uh, the, the right gear? So I repeated the, the hike a couple of days afterwards. So there I was, like, um, thinking thoughtly thoughts, contemplating this beautiful landscape, wondering, um, should I use a small knife or a piece of metal as my DI framework? And um, someone approaches, and I'm like, oh man, I just got to this spot. I would like to spend some time here. And he tells me, just so you know, there's a big black bear. I'm like, OK, I'll be careful in the way down. No, it's right here. And while I was Hearing this, it, it was my, my first encounter with a bear. I was wondering, could I grab a tail? Uh, could I grab something from this tail and uh, apply it to machine learning? So there are many fields in, in, on, on which we can use machine learning. This is one simple example. Simple. Um, machine learning is quite useful to process big amounts of data. In this case, I'm showing. Uh, two planets, Kepler-90i and uh, Kepler-80. Those were found, the, the, the system was found in 2012, but it wasn't until, until 2017 that thanks to machine learning, the huge am amount of data could be processed, and we were able to found these two planets, making it the um, other solar system apart from ours with um, eight planets. There are many other fields in which we can apply machine learning like uh, in health. This is um, an image of um, the uh, retina. And thanks to machine learning, it's possible to find several diseases just analyzing the images. Also, there's possible to analyze uh, data of tree logging. And we can use machine learning to, in some way, combat climate change. Anyway, um, there's been a couple of years in which a lot of our day-to-day -day, um, apps and products have been uh, sprinkled with machine learning. This is a uh, meme that I took from uh, two or three years ago from Google I.O. And it's quite common that it, this is a trend. We've been seeing machine learning present in several places. So basically, we're um, in the middle of a shift from mobile first to AI first. We're shifting from the form factor of a phone that is uh, working with uh, touch input with several constraints like uh, power and CPU capacity, but also with uh, connectivity, shifting to uh, a new trend where uh, basically the apps are, uh, instead of reacting, are anticipating 
kind of uh, with uh, maps where I get a notification on uh, how traffic is and learning and adapting. Anyway, let's get back to the Royal Arch and my, my hike and the bear. The bear was there. We were like um, four or five people. I was with a friend. And I'm not sure if it was because uh, I couldn't uh, measure the danger of, of the bear, but I was um, like, uh, I, I wasn't afraid, afraid. And because I thought the person that uh, let me know that there was a bear was a local, um, I was trying to remain calm. Anyway, at some point, um, this man tell, tells us to just wait, to don't make a sound, and just wait for the bird to leave. And after a couple of minutes, I noticed that he's hyperventilating and trembling in fear. So at that point, I also got scared. And the only thing that I can think is, I'm going to die here in the paws of a bear instead of with an evil self-aware robot. This is one of the um, things that uh, the media has, uh, has been feeding us for a while, that uh, robots are going to get self-aware and in some way would like to try to wipe the humanity. Um, and mostly because this is the story that media is telling. Lots of people that are not working on tech are afraid that this might happen. I don't think that this will happen in any way, mostly because um, AI works from data, and the data that we're feeding comes from us, and the average human being don't want to wipe the humanity, but we do have biases. And it's important to keep in mind that all the biases that we have when generating data are going to reflect on uh, most of the apps using machine learning. Anyway, so a good starting point to discuss all this is understanding some of the terms. AI, it's a general term, kind of, a, of an umbrella covering anything that um, it's completing a task, any task, with the same level as if some person would, uh, would be doing it. Keep in mind that AI has been around for a while, and since it was discussed like uh, around maybe 50 or 60 years ago in a conference, where the, several of the terms were coined. We, will, we, as humanity, have been looking forward for robots and having uh, a way for uh, humanoids to solve any of our problems. So AI, it's like, a, like an umbrella, as I've said, covering several ideas. But one of the fields that have been trendy for a couple of years now, it's machine learning. Machine learning is a subset of AI. And basically, the idea here is that I'm going to have some algorithms running in a piece of software that have not been explicitly programmed to accomplish something. And the algorithms are going to be able to predict, in some way, a solution to this specific scenario. I think it's important to discuss that we are in a stage of artificial narrow intelligence, mostly because AI and specifically machine learning is able to solve several of our issues, but uh, very specific. Eventually, we're going to reach a stage of artificial general intelligence in which any piece of software running algorithm is going to be able to solve uh, general uh, scenarios, all of our problems. And eventually, we're going to get to a stage of artificial superior intelligence. The shift from AGI to ASI is going to be uh, really fast. But uh, right now, as we are in A and I, we're going to spend uh, some years until we reach the next phase. The, um, the phase with uh, artificial superior intelligence is going to be quite interesting, mostly because AI is going to be able to uh, have some level of intelligence superior to like the whole collective humanity. Anyway, it's common to uh, listen or hear about machine learning and also deep learning. Basically, deep learning, it's some kind of machine learning using artificial neural networks and connecting several nodes in order to solve a problem. So what's a neural network? It's a piece of software with nodes 
connecting, um, uh, with connections between them, and transformations, either linear or nonlinear. I don't want to get that deep into math, but basically a neural network is this, looks like a, a graph, a standard data structure. And in this case, we have the input, the input, the output, and just one hidden layer. We can have several layers, and this is called a shallow neural network, and therefore it's a shallow machine learning. But if we have more interconnected layers in the middle, that's deep learning. So basically, deep learning, it's a term coined for uh, something that's been around for a while. Artificial neural networks have been around for several years. But when we have several layers, different and many layers in between connecting all these nodes, that's called deep learning. Anyway, let's get back to the verb. So as I'm waiting for the bird to leave, there's a, we were like a four or five people. Someone came up running. I'm, I'm not sure from where, but uh, we were at first four. Then we became five in our group waiting for the bird to leave. The bird, it's wandering around. We, don't have, we only have one way to enter and to exit. At some point, someone left a water bottle, so the bird is quite curious. He grabs the bottle and starts drinking. For me, it was quite something seeing the bird removing the cap of the bottle. It's, uh, it was interesting, but anyway, um, as we're waiting, that's the bird. There's some people that, that didn't thought that there was uh, something worth uh, of living until they saw him like going down, they left running. So anyway, as we're waiting, I wonder, what should I do? I snap a couple of pictures, share them with, uh, with a couple of friends, and most of them tell me, like, oh, that's a cute little bear. You should go and pet him. And I'm, I wonder, should I pet the bear? That might not be the best idea. Here we have a couple of scenarios in my mind. I'm, I'm wondering what should I do. Um, the smiley face on the bottom, it's like um, some scenario in which both of us, the bear and I, live happily to, our, uh, uh, to any place afterwards. The other face. It's more a scenario in which um, we both live with some, let's say, minor scratches. So anyway, should I pet the bird? Maybe no. Should I run? That's not a good idea either. Should I wait? Maybe. How long should I wait? If I wait too long, that might be also a bad idea. Um, I start Googling, what should you do when you find a bird? You're supposed to look big. So that's uh, the way to go. This is a small. Uh, decision tree, and this is a classification problem that we're solving right here. So um, <clears throat> all these options eventually lead us to a binary classifier, and this classification problem, it's one way to approach to machine learning. I know this is something from statistics, basic, basic statistics, and mine seem like a really simple approach, but this is one of the first steps when we are uh, getting right to solve a problem with machine learning. Anyway, it's one of two options of something called supervised learning. And at that point, I'm feeling a little bit like uh, in a movie. This is The Revenant. <laughs> if you haven't seen that movie, it's, uh, it has really nice photography, but at some, po at some point, uh, the, protagon uh, the protagonist, the main protagonist, fights with a bear. It was a grizzly bear, it was a black bear, but uh, they're similar in some way. So as I'm waiting and staring to my shoes, I remember that I wasn't wearing the right shoes the uh, last time that I was there. I wonder, is this trail uh, measured in some way regarding what you're wearing? So we have. Sorry, I have the, the stick of uh, highlighting with the, with the pointer. It's not uh, displaying on the screen. So this trail, it's um, categorized as hard. And I wonder, how can you measure difficulty? It might be because of the terrain. It might be because of the altitude, the um, uh, elevation gain. It might be because 
any other parameter. And that's also a classification. I mean, we can measure difficulty as easy, medium, or hard. But is this related in some way to the time to completion, the time to hike? And this is a completely different problem because the difficulty, it's a classifier. In this case, um, I'm referring to a ternary classifier. But the time, it's in a different domain. So instead of having only three options, we have a lot of options. Because of that, we need a different tool. And how do we measure the time to hike? As I mentioned, we have several variables to take into account. And I'm going to share a couple of pictures of other hikes that I did at that uh, visit to Colorado. Might be the terrain. It was a little bit uh, difficult to walk through the different rocks. Also, could be because of the things that you find in the middle of the hike. This was uh, really fun for me, crossing like uh, this small uh, body of water. And also, it's weather related, although it's summer and we're, uh, I think, like finishing summer. There was still some snow. And also, the elevation gain. This was around uh, 11, 11 or uh, 12,000 feet. And the uh, landscapes were mesmerizing, but this hike in particular took for me around uh, seven or eight hours to complete. So all these things are important to decide how long it's going to take. All these variables are the input or features, and we're going to get an output or a label. In this uh, particular example, it's going to be the, um, the time. So with that in mind, we can come up with an equation where we have these features multiplied by their importance and added up to uh, come up with an answer. This is a regression problem. And although we could use an equation to solve a like this uh, to solve a classification problem, it's better to use the right tool for each one of the um, problems that we're facing. Both of these, regression and classification, are supervised learning. And it's one of the main types of machine learning. I might be taking too long to explain this. So what other, what other options of algorithms do we have? So um, we read that the what, that the thing to do besides look big to the bear, it was for the bear to notice that you were here, not to see you as a menace, otherwise uh, might, uh, might charge against you. And we also read that um, commonly bears mock charge and then leave because they are uh, not exactly something to be worried about when uh, hiking. So I did what anyone would do while waiting, and I started reading white papers about how many bear attacks are um, uh, yearly do we have in North America, and the number is quite small. This is um, fatal bear attacks compared to other uh, things like uh, bees or dogs. The number of bear, bear attacks is quite small, so. At this point, I feel a little bit uh, safe. This is from uh, 1999. This is from uh, 2005. It's uh, like uh, numbers are similar. I mean, bears are not exactly a menace when you're hiking, as long as you don't um, appear as something menacing to them. And also, I noticed that it's possible to group the um, uh, bear attacks. In this case, we have like uh, some predatory attack. Sometimes the bears attack because uh, they're hungry. This is quite uncommon, but it happens. And we can group several data, even if we don't know what's the outcome. That's on supervised learning. We can come up with several clusters um, and several options of groups regarding some category, even if we don't have like the label or an answer, it's possible to analyze the data. So we have supervised and unsupervised. 
Mainly the difference is that we have labeled data, in this case are uh, house prices, and for unsupervised, we don't have the label, in this case the price, but still we can do some grouping. Besides those two, um, there's another type of machine learning where I don't have any idea how to react when a bear appears. And basically we have a, this is a scenario when there's an agent doing some actions and getting either a reward, a delay reward or a punishment through some interpreter. All these are math functions, but this is, for me, this is the kind of machine learning that's been more interesting lately. This is called reinforcement learning. So we have supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. Once we choose which one of these three is the best approach to solve our problems, we can come up with a model. That's a representation. In the cases that I mentioned, could be the decision tree, could be the equation for the linear regression. In uh, some way, we come up with a representation, and then we can train that model. That is, give the representation lots and lots of data, and with that data, eventually, we have a trained model, and we can use it for inference or guessing what would be an answer for a, a future scenario. So going from idea to implementation, basically it's choosing which problem to solve, selecting the data set, and that's one of the main challenges when you are working with machine learning. If you are shifting from software development to machine learning, let's call it development, but uh, it's basically constructing the models, we're going to struggle a lot with data. And it's a bit different debugging data than debugging software. So anyway, we need to construct the data set, select the data, in, in some way transform it to have it in a format where it's going to be useful for our model, eventually give all this data to the model, and then use it to uh, do predictions. So that's the end of the tale of the verb. And we're going to focus the next part of the talk in how to do this using Flutter and MLKit. In order to start working with um, machine learning, we can take several, uh, there are several paths available. The first and maybe the most approachable is use APIs. Uh, like many other issues that we face like, as developers, using an API, it's going to be quite straightforward. There are many available in the market. And at some point, we're going to face a wall in terms of flexibility. The API might not be as flexible as we want to solve our problem. So then we can choose a different way. And uh, the next way to solve uh, an issue using machine learning is using transfer learning. Basically, we take a model, an existing model, and retrain it using new data. And there are several tools to do, it, to do this. We can either use a framework like TensorFlow or PyTorch or any other model framework, or use an even abstract tool like AutoML or uh, other API from uh, any other big company like Watson or Cognitive Services from IBM and Microsoft. And eventually, we're going to end up with a model that solves our problem. In many, um, in many problems, like when doing computer vision, it's a better idea to do transfer learning. Even if we're doing this ourselves, not using an, an, uh, tool, not using a tool like AutoML, it's a better idea to use transfer learning instead of starting from scratch, because we will need lots of data, and mostly because the, uh, both in computer vision and in NLP, models are in a state-of-the-art phase, we can use those models and just retrain them. But if we're solving a different problem and none of the available models would be useful to do transfer learning, then we need to build a model from scratch. And that's going to be a um, uh, challenge in terms of gathering all the data and all the processing, uh, the CPU power needed to, to do that. Anyway, these are the three options that we have. There are several, like, uh, in between options, but basically uh, summarizing, we have these three different approaches, and MLKit, it's on the first one. We're going to use an API. Basically, MLKit, it's an API that um, packages uh, 
all the know-how available to Google for machine learning and provides us as developers with uh, several tools to use those models. We don't need to uh, worry about how to train, even uh, there's an option, even if there's an option to do that, basically we just need to call these APIs. It's optimized for mobile, it, uh, as almost all of the Firebase tools, and it provides an approach that's holistic in terms of providing with uh, all of the APIs that we would need. There are a couple of uh, common capabilities like image labeling, text recognition, face detection. Notice that this is not face recognition. Most of the APIs don't provide that, mostly because it could be dangerous, but uh, they provide face detection. So you can compare faces, but uh, the API out of the box, it's not going to tell you this face uh, belongs to this person. To my knowledge, there are uh, lots of um, APIs providing face detection and just a couple, of, most of them uh, provide this feature behind a paywall to, to do face recognition. We also have uh, barcode scanning, landmark recognition, smart reply, that's something quite interesting, I've been trying it out lately, and custom model inference. Mostly because at some point, you might need to do something on yourself. It's possible to build a model either using a tool like AutoML or using a framework like TensorFlow and then uploading this model. And in this case, MLKit works like a, a hosting platform for the model. These are all the um, um, capabilities that I mentioned and all of them are available on device and just two, um, three are available on cloud. Just landmark recognition is not available on device, but we can choose what, um, feature we would like to use and from which platform we're going to access it. There used to be several approaches to do this from Google. It used to be called um, Mobile Vision API and Cloud Vision API. Cloud Vision is still available as a cloud product, but MLKit packages everything in a, in a way that's um, quite easy to approach and to use. So to Begin with MLKit, we just need to know what we'd like to accomplish. I'm going to show some, code, some Flutter code about, about this. And I chose, I, I chose Flutter mostly because I think it's, um, it's an approachable platform similar to Firebase. If you've been doing native for uh, a while, it's not going to be that different. M maybe the main difference is the declarative UI. And even with native development, we're approaching to a um, to, uh, declarative UI uh, way of solving the, um, uh, the definition of the interface with uh, Compose and with Swift UI. It's, it's interesting because I, I think there are several trends and it works like a, a pendulum. And at this point, we are uh, approaching to, a, to an age of uh, declarative UIs. Anyway, with Flutter, we have uh, several advantages, and working with the UI, it's quite easy, and also, it's cross-platform. So I think it's a, it's a tool worth of uh, exploring. Besides the, the UI, there are a couple of things that work different when comparing these two native. Mm, maybe besides the UI, one of the main things is the way you work with widgets, because everything is a widget, and you have uh, both stateful and stateless widgets. I'm, I'm not going into detail uh, about uh, Flutter or widgets, but we're going to review some Flutter code. So if you have any questions regarding how is this built, feel free to ask at the, at the end. I still have um, 10 minutes to go. So basically we need to add the dependencies. We're working with Firebase ML Vision. From all of the features of ML Kit, Vision, it's provided in a plugin developed by the Firebase team, or at least it's an official um, plugin. There are many unofficial plugins. A couple of them work with text recognition. I would advise to go with this plugin in particular, mostly because it's uh, backed by, by developers from the, from the um, official team. And although it only provides Vision, it, uh, it provides it in a way that's uh, 
comprehensible and easy to start with. So we need to add the dependency and also import the package in our library. And then in just a couple of steps, like uh, three or four steps, we're going to use Machine Learning Kit. So basically, we need to get an image. In this case, I'm getting it from a file. We can, we can grab the bytes from an, an image or use a, a path to open it. Then we're going to create the detector. We have several options here it's about the, uh, the available detector, detector for, for text, uh, labels, or cloud labels. Notice the, the second and third line. The third, it's on-device labeling. The second, it's cloud labeling. It's almost the same and works really in a similar way, either if you're doing cloud or on-device. And for this uh, code sample, we're going to use a face detector. So basically, it's the same syntax. Then, after the detector, it's available. Uh, we can configure it. In this case, I'm enabled the classification, the landmarks, and the tracking. The detector is going to give us some uh, data on the face landmarks, like nose, ears, mouth, and also it's going to classify, uh, doing some sentiment analysis. We're also uh, setting the, the face size, and there are a couple of uh, parameters that we can set up here. Then we process the image. Notice that here we have an await keyword because we're sending this to the cloud and waiting for a JSON response about the um, analysis. And afterwards, we extract the data. In this case, because it was a face detector, we will look for faces, and we get the bounding boxes if it's uh, rotated or tilted. And for each one of the faces, because we enable the classification, the landmarks, and the tracking, we can grab the data of each one of those features. Uh, here, we're grabbing the landmark detection for an ear, the classification to see the smiling probability, and the tracking ID for, the, for uh, face tracking. And basically, that's it. In just a couple of steps, we're working with machine learning, with vision. But under the hood, there are several things like um, convolutional neural networks, maybe some uh, transfer learning, several models. Inception, it's one of the most popular vision models. It's based on ImageNet. And uh, I'm, this changes like each year, but uh, I think Inception is still the best computer vision model available. And it's easy to retrain with, uh, retrain with just a couple of images. With uh, around maybe 25, 50, you can come up with some answers that are good. But uh, you'll need around 100 images. I don't remember if uh, AutoML specify which number it's the, the right one, but uh, uh, you, you'll need at least 100 images to get a, a good result. And the data that we're getting of the different features and landmarks, it's going to be in, in points in this image, and we can work with that. Uh, I think I have like five minutes to go. Uh, and I would like to show uh, an example. I was trying to build a, a game, in this case, we're working with an image and sending that image to the label, um, to the machine learning kit labeler, and grabbing the top three results and allowing the user to guess one of those results. So we have an image, the um, top three results with percentages. The, the, the um, uh, image on the right is the, like the start of the game. And you can enter some uh, word to guess and if it works, it's going to turn around and show the, the result. To do this, um, I'm, I'm adding, by the way, a couple of slides on how to open a, a file from assets, mostly because this was my first test. test and I found uh, that it wasn't as straightforward as I thought, grabbing the path or the file itself from an asset. Although it's really easy to show the image. You just need a widget, and we have already um, out, of the box, um, out of the box widget to show that image from Fl um, Flutter, it's not that easy to grab neither the bytes or the path or the file itself. So in order to do that, we need um, the path provider plugin and some code to read the file from assets and then write it to a different file. I found that this was the easiest way to try the um, uh, the classification and labeling of an image using a file from assets. 
And afterwards, we can build the fire vision, vision image from that file and call the labeler. Eventually, we will wait for the result. Again, um, notice the await keyword when we're calling a um, uh, remote API. And finally, we extract that data. In this case, I'm looking for both the label and the confidence. So in order to automa uh, automatize this in a simple game, we use um, an API, the Unsplash source API, to get random images. So we will get that image from the API, then use that file, store that f the file, and use that file to provide it to MLKit, analyze and label the image, eventually providing these percentages and weighting of confidence and waiting for a user to input what's on the image. Mostly because this is not uh, completely perfect. There's an opportunity to build this game. It's similar to, to a game called 94% where you guess what's on an, on an image or what's something regarding that image. It's a uh, popular game. So basically, to do this in, in the app, we grab the image as simple as this. I mean, we don't, we're not using a complex library. We're just uh, loading the image and awaiting for the result, finding that path. Notice also that um, we're returning here a future because we're going to use that eventually to update the state. Also, we are going to work with that path, that file path, with the labeler and another await. And from the result, we're going to take the top three results. This is the um, uh, fl uh, flutter part where we update the state. We are awaiting for both the image and the analysis after, after uh, we have the image itself. Then we look for the labels and update several uh, variables for the state. Eventually, we call this function from init state, and basically that's it. Here I have the. Um, looks a little bit big, but I think we can make that work. So, um, hmm. uh, unfortunately, it's not showing. There's supposed to be like an input in the lower part. Let me try to resize it here. Mm. Mm. No, it's not showing. I should have added a, a scrolling or a, an adapting UI, but let me try one more time. I think it, no, because of the bar, it's not going to work. But basically, this is the idea. We have the picture, we have the um, uh, percentages, and an input section with the refresh button. We grab a new picture. Let's see if it works. OK, there we go. And the. Percentage of confidence changes each picture that we're grabbing. Let me try, try it on my screen. Um, here we have some uh, buildings and metal. Let me try one of these words to see if, OK, metal worked. And then we have it change. Sorry about that. I would like to, I, I would have liked to show the, um, uh, them working, but that's a resolution issue. And I'm having it again. Let me see. There we go. It's going to fade out in a, in a second. Anyway, I have like a minute to go. I was experimenting with both MLKit and Flutter. I really like to try new things. Uh, experiments are fun. Machine learning comes with several buzzwords. And at the end of the day, you're going to need some math tools to understand what's happening under the hood. But if you just want to approach and try it out, I think it's, um, it's uh, some topic that it's uh, available for everyone, for anyone to try it out. I, I believe that all of us should be able to experiment and learn. Trial and error is one of my favorite ways of learning. So um, keep in mind that you might find several tutorials that uh, deals with the math, 
and partial derivatives and uh, stochastic gradient descent, or uh, I'm saying a lot of other buzzwords, but at the end of the day, it's going to be just some uh, tool, math as a tool, solving a specific problem. So don't be afraid of approaching to machine learning. Use machine learning when it's useful. It might sound some, uh, in some way redundant, but because it's trendy, lots and lots of developers are using machine learning when in, in, in places where it could be solved with a different tool. Keep also in mind that if you are shifting to uh, a position of machine learning engineer, it's going to be it's going to come up with several trade-offs, and you will need commitment in order to uh, solve the different challenges that you're going to face during the process. Machine learning and, and mobile, it's um, available right now. You can use things like MLKit, like Flutter, or any other API available. So uh, I think it's a good idea to at least test it out. Feel, feel free to do it, to try it out with uh, different experiments. But at the end of the day, keep in mind that at, as developers, as people working in tech, we're supposed to increase the quality of living, improve our quality of living. So use machine learning for good. Use it to solve the biggest issues that we're facing. And eventually, if you really like the topic, research and keep moving it forward Eventually, this is going to reflect on more APIs for many more people to use machine learning to solve our big, biggest issues. So I think I have a minute to go. No? Uh, less than a minute. <laughs> Minus one. So anyway, uh, summarizing, experiment. There are many tools to do this. Flutter and MLKit are one of my favorites to start with. If you have any questions, I don't think we have time for that right now. But I'm going to uh, be around. Feel free to grab me and ask any question. Thank you very much. <laughs>